Perfect. Mr. and Joe's ready. Yep. Perfect. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the City of Hermantown Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. Uh, tonight is July twentieth, two thousand twenty-one. It's currently seven oh one in the evening. We're going to open up this evening's meeting with a roll call of members. Uh, myself, Corey Colquist. Here. Valerie Orlett. Here. Samuel Clark. Here. Shannon Sweeney Jorgensen. Beth Wensloff. Here. Buckley Simmons. Here. And Councilor Geisler. Here. Thank you very much. Second this evening is an approval of this evening's agenda. I'm sure we've all looked at it. Can I get a motion, please? Wensloff, so move. Beth with the first. Can we get a second? Colquist with the second. Thank you, Corey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Number three this evening is the approval of the minutes from the June 15th, 2021 meeting. Uh, I think there was an updated one of those sent to us via email today. Can I get a motion on that either way? I'd move to approve. Thank you, Valerie. Can we get a second, please? Simmons, a second. Thank you, Mr. Buckley. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Great, and thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, I'm just gonna jump in real quick there. The, yes, we had an amended minutes came out uh, earlier today uh, that reflects the uh, initial vote that was taken on the um, the King Creek Townhomes project uh, that with the um, that was an amended um, application or amended um, version of the plat that way. Perfect. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Yep. Uh, number four this evening is public discussion. Is there anybody here this evening to speak on something that's not on this evening's agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. I can get a little closer to the mic. Is anybody here this evening on, that wants to speak on something that's not on this evening's agenda? Not seeing any, we will move on to section five, which is public hearings. This evening for 5A, we have an application by Meg Johnson for a special use permit for the purpose of starting a greenhouse slash nursery, including sales and production at the residence located at 4165. Uh, this is currently located in an R1 zoning district. Uh, Eric, what do you have for us? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you mentioned that the special use uh, permit application for the creation of a greenhouse nursery with the sales and production, as you mentioned at the applicant's residence, uh, actually, just want to have one correction. Uh, the legal address is 4168 Lindahl Road. Oh, I'm sorry, did I read that wrong? The, um, the property is located uh, approximately a quarter mile north of Maple Grove Road along Lindahl Road. It's located on the east side of the property. Uh, the applicant has uh, 18 acres in size of land area. There's an existing home with the garage uh, located on that site right now. And what the applicant is proposing is to uh, start this business. What they're envisioning would be uh, more of a seasonal type of use that way that would be occurring from late spring to early fall, essentially the growing season uh, that we have here. Uh, they anticipate potential hours of operations from eight to five, uh, potentially up to 25 or 30 customers a day at that location. Uh, what they're proposing is they'd have a small parking lot that's north of their home. They locate uh, a couple different greenhouses on that property. Uh, it's a relatively small in size, uh, approximately 10 by 10 for one and 12 by 24 for the other. Uh, they'd have some different growing beds uh, located on that property also. Uh, on the aerial photo uh, associated with this, there is wetlands uh, on the property that those are located primarily to the east of this uh, operation that way. Uh, this type of um, use, is permitted as a special use permit in the R1 zoning district, as well as any of our residential zoning districts. Uh, they're just required to, uh, uh, to basically adhere to that plan that they submitted and uh, working on that same fact, this is a seasonal type of operation that they're expecting. Okay, hey, uh, commission members, any questions for Eric this evening before we hear from the applicant? I, I have a couple questions. Uh, I guess, first off, I was reviewing the special use permit in R1 zoning. Why have it be under a special use if it's allowed? There are a number of different ones that way. Like you said, that um, for instance, the if this type of uh, 
was brought to us in an R3 zoning district in a small lot, for instance, that we would want to have uh, much more public input. So the whole purpose for a lot of these special use permits is, is to have the public input. So people could provide any uh, comments, concerns that they may have with the potential operation that way. A special use permit uh, is still ultimately approved by a city council. So uh, it is allowed use. Uh, like I said, if there's other extenuating circumstances, it could ultimately be denied at a city council level. But uh, when you're looking at something like this, it's a large acreage property, generally in the rural area of our city, that it, it, it meets the underlying, you know, how does it relate to its uh, neighbors that way? In this case, uh, surrounded by other rural properties are very, very large acreage properties. So um, it basically it starts working towards that special use permit. But it, once again, it does ultimately require an approval and it's more of a site specific that exists that way. Okay, and then the second question would just be taxes. I mean, this goes from a residential usage to a commercial or business. Is do our taxes, are their taxes affected or anyone surrounding the property? Actually, it would still maintain its residential use. This is and zoning that way. It would not be rezoned to a commercial use. Um, it's uh, St. Louis County may look at it a little bit differently in how they classify that actual property, but from the zoning standpoint, it will still remain as an R1 residential zoning. Perfect. Thank you. Some great questions. Uh, I've got one. What would the process be if they wanted to come back and expand the? looks like a small operation today. What if it really is super successful and they want to get into something more like Grusendorf's have over on Midway Road? Sure, with that, they'd have to amend the SUP. Okay. So required to go through this process again. So right now they can stay at this level. There's nothing stopping them from coming back in the future to try and amend that. That is correct, yes. Okay, all right. Commission members, any other questions for Eric? Exactly, yes. Uh, in the past, and if you recall, you're probably thinking to something we just went through previously, where uh, about 10, 15 years ago, uh, we used to write special use permits that were non-transferable right. without the approval of the city. And uh, right. exactly. and we yes. have since ceased doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And how about signing? Uh, at this point, uh, they don't indicate any signage, and if uh, the applicant might be able to answer that question, uh, I'd like to pose that to them if they have the ability to uh, answer that. Sure. Can you please get one of the applicants to come up and state your name and address for the record? We might have a question or two for you guys. Yeah. Can you guys hear me on Zoom? You guys are on the Zoom? Yes, we're on Zoom. Perfect. What's your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Megan Johnson and 4168 Lindahl Road. Thank you very much, Megan. Uh, the first question is signage. Do you have any plan for any uh, potential signage at that site? Um, at this time, we don't have any like super specific signage plans that we've thought about yet. Okay. We do have a permit process for signage. So what we would do is we would require them to work with Jim Rich, our building official. And uh, we would look at this as a type of, you know, what classification of signage we have, essentially A through F. And uh, this would probably fall more into that C or D, or excuse me, B or C category that way. Okay. But when it gets to, uh, for instance, uh, I get questions a lot of times, people want to put up what you see, I call them the yard sign type of thing and right. place them around town. No, th those would not be permitted, that sort of use. And this one, I think should add to the condition that any signs would be meeting our permit. So uh, just to clarify that, you know, that's up to you guys to make the motion, but I just think that just so we don't get some random signage mm -hmm. that it needs to be adhered to for setbacks and size and etc. I think I think that would be a requirement already, but we can look at that. That's fine. Okay, perfect. It's just to clarify, Eric, on what you said, it sounds like if they did put any signage up, that would require some sort of permit. Yes, it would. Now, they put that obviously on their property that way. Um, the same thing, you know, getting into, you know, putting it up in a street corner, things like that. No, we don't allow that for any type of use. But yes, if they had one on their property, um, we would require that. But I, but I, I do think 
concur with uh, Councillor Geisler's uh, thoughts that way. I think that would be a good addition sure. to this. Okay. Uh, Meg, do you have any uh, questions or comments for us on this process? Um, not, not yet, at least. <laughs> okay. Can I ask your intentions on the, the nursery and the greenhouse? It just says flower beds on there. Are you looking to get into more like landscaping applications with shrubs and trees and stuff like that? In the, potentially in the future, or are you just starting out with a small operation with uh, flowers? It'll just be a small operation. The flower beds on the drawing are just where we're going to keep like our overstock. Thank you for that clarification. Yep. Commission members, any questions for Meg on the phone? Um, I just for my own curiosity, I assume this is well and septic on this property. Yes, it is. Okay, so they would to have enough water to service a greenhouse. That would be their responsibility. They from the well, I assume. Yep, okay. that is correct. But they'd have to want to verify the capacity of that well to be able to make the operation. Okay. Commission members, any other questions on 5A this evening for our applicant, Meg Johnson? Does anybody in the audience here this evening want to speak on this matter? Eric, do you have anything else for us on this one? Uh, no, I do not. Okay. I uh, will look for a motion on 5A this evening. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to close the public hearing first. I have to close the public hearing at 7.13. I'll look for a motion on 5A this evening. It's an application by Meg Johnson for a special use permit for the purpose of starting a greenhouse. Um, I would move to approve the application for the greenhouse um, item 5A at 4168 Lindell Road. As it's written? As it's written. Okay. Can we get a second? Sam Clark, I'll second. Thank you very much. Can we get all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much, Meg. Second up this evening is 5B. It's an application by JLG Enterprises for a final plat for a 10 lot and one out lot subdivision located at 3956 Stebner Road. The property is located in an R3 zoning district. Uh, Eric, what do you have for us on this one tonight? Great, thank you. Um, I believe the majority of you were on the planning commission last year. Uh, it was approximately, I believe it was April of 2020 when uh, the applicant JLG Enterprises first approached the city about uh, a plat, the preliminary plat for what's known as Peyton Acres. Uh, at that time, uh, they were looking at two phases to start off with, a phase 1A and a phase 1B. Um, there is a master plan that has been prepared as part of this project, and um, which eventually will connect Stebner Road down to uh, Oak Ridge Drive through the Bishop's Woods uh, subdivision that way. Uh, this would create essentially a looped road system, not only for this development, but also for uh, Oak Ridge as well. Uh, this is a project that has been proposed in phases. Uh, what's before us this evening is phase 1B, which is the 10 lots. Uh, this is still adhering to and falls under that preliminary plat approval that was received last year. Uh, the final plat for the first phase 1A had been approved last year, I believe it was June, excuse me, July of 2020. And now the uh, applicant is moving on to the second phase uh, of these 10 lots. Uh, these are standard R3 zoning type lots, a uh, minimum of a one half acre in size, minimum of 100 foot of frontage, and uh, meets all the setbacks associated with the R3 zoning district, uh, having the 50 foot front yard setback, a minimum of 40 feet in the rear, uh, a minimum of 10 foot side yard setbacks uh, for an, in an aggregate of 25 total. Uh, this project has gone through wetland reviews as part of it uh, that had received approval for up to 10,000 square feet of wetland impacts across all phases associated with the project. Uh, there is some wetland impact associated with uh, this next phase here, and they're still well within the thresholds of that 10,000 square feet from the wetland standpoint. Uh, phase 1A does have its own detention pond. Uh, this phase 1B 
will also have its own pond. It will be located uh, basically on lot five of um, block two associated with that. Uh, there will be an easement on top of that so the city could get in and uh, access that pond in the future if need be. Uh, to date, uh, the applicant has been constructing the uh, road and utilities and uh, not going the way of a letter of credit. Uh, they have that ability to do that uh, the way it's set up in our ordinance. Uh, and I believe that they're going to continue that, um, that same mindset for this phase 1B that way. Uh, right now, phase 1A, uh, all the utilities are in and they're starting to work on the road section associated with it. I uh, have had some discussions with the, uh, the, the developer, the owner of the sites that uh, they're looking to have a letter of credit to finish out that first phase 1A. So that would give them the ability to uh, finalize the plat and uh, start selling lots for that. The letter of credit covers the uh, paving of the roadway, the sidewalk associated with this, as well as curb and gutter that way. So um, the same way as we move forward into a future development agreement, uh, we'd give the developer that same option, whether to build everything first and then finalize, sign off on the plat, or come up with the letter of credit. Uh, but this phase, like the, all the other phases in here, it will be a 28 foot wide roadway. It'll be paved with curb and gutter as well as sidewalk on one side of this. So once again, this evening, we're just looking at now what's called, known as phase 1B. It's the 10 lots that are just moving to the east of the, um, of the existing work they've been doing so far. Thank you very much, Eric. Commission members, any questions for Eric on this? Um, Eric, do we have a, a drawing of the whole development? Yes, uh, uh, what I'll do is I'll just bring this up to the, the monitor so we can see it. Okay, appreciate that. I don't think there's, yes. uh, is there a monitor? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, fancy. Oh, Mr. Wickland, oh. are you able to? Oh, thank you. I'm on the ceiling, Corey. Nice, okay. <laughs> so as I had mentioned, this is the phase 1A that's being constructed right now. This is existing access off of Stebner Road. This is the phase 1B that we're discussing this evening. Now, this is the master plan that was created last year as part of this overall development. The next thought would be they would move on to the phase two at a future date here, because right about this point, is the break and where the sanitary sewer can service uh, these lots right here. So there's an existing lift station that's in the Bishop's Woods development down at this portion. Phase two will be able to access that lift station as well as a good portion through here. Uh, the city has been looking at this overall development as well. Uh, and there's uh, starting to look at the possibility of having a, another sanitary sewer location approximately in this location as well as a stub road that could hook over into that section 24. That's where our new sanitary sewer is done. That would provide uh, road access to there as well as access to our trail system that we have. And take that pump offline. That is correct. And take that lift station offline. Thank you very much. So phase two will exit onto what road is that? Down here, this is the yeah. existing Oak Ridge Road. Oak Ridge, okay. Yep. But that, that is at a future date. Right. So right now, this only has one way in, one way out. That's correct, one way in, one way out. But when this was first brought to us, that was what we wanted to see. That we have those two mm -hmm. points, as well as that other connection point, but eventually go to the east here. Mm -hmm. So we have a third location in the house of development. Sure. Any other questions for Eric? Has the roadway been started on phase one yet? Uh, yes, I believe uh, today there was um, basically sand and gravel, or base that way, start to brought in, start to bring that up to grade. Okay. And then just uh, with it being a hot topic last month, what uh, 28 feet, is that standard? And what, I guess, in comparison is on Johnson Road, what did we put in there for them? Sure, there's uh, this roadway here, this is what's known as an urban section. It's a 28 feet from 
curb to curb or gutter line to gutter line for it. Um, once again, that's a totally paved surface that way. Uh, what happened, and there, there will be a uh, uh, underground drainage system essentially associated with that, a stormwater system for that. Now, for instance, in the Johnson Portland area, that's what's known as a rural section. The city standards are 24 feet of paved area along with two foot of gravel shoulders for that. And then there's ditches for that. And I believe in that, uh, that other development there on Portland and in Johnson, that that road varies from 20 to 22 feet in width. And that was after numerous discussions with a number of the property owners uh, within that development, that they wanted to see the, rural, the narrower section. In addition, when that road had been built originally, it was not centered in the right of way. So what would have happened if we would have moved that roadway and expanded it to that 24, people would have had the uh, essentially impression that their yard as they're viewing it to the edge of blacktop would have gotten much smaller. So that was one of the rationales as well of why that road came in at a, at a narrower width that way. to kind of keep more of what had been there existing. So 28 feet is a good size roadway. Yes, it is. That's our city standard. Okay. And then the uh, other question I had, wetland impact of less than 10,000 feet. So how does that work when someone buys a lot? Are all those wetland credits used up and does that become then the responsibility of the future property owner or how does that all work exactly. Sure. One of the requirements of the development agreement is, is well, they have it, their other development is there's GIS, there's, there's posts actually put in the ground with it, what says wetland. And then there's also GIS points associated with that. So as a property owner, they'll see the plat, they'll have the delineated wetlands on it, but on top of it, they can look out their back window. There's the post of the wetland, that's the limits of it. So what happens in these developments is like you said, all that the credits or de minimis exemption is called are utilized for the development. Now, if a property owner came in and said, I'd like a bigger yard, that is a very difficult process to go through to get the wetland filled. It's called the technical evaluation panel. It consists of the city, St. Louis County, the state of Minnesota, as well as the Corps of Engineers. And they look at wetland impacts primarily for either the creation of a house pad, or infrastructure or roadways that way. Looking into the creation of larger yard spaces, generally not supported by that technical evaluation panel. Okay. So, and as part of it as well, at the development agreement, uh, the, the developer is, is part of their closing documents are responsible to give a letter to the homeowner saying that there are wetlands on your property and this is the extent of those. And I mean, obviously, the, the de developer needs to find this out from a financial standpoint, but I'm assuming all these lots that they're putting in can be utilized and sold off and would work for a, a family home. As far as the, the lot size. Where the wetland wouldn't be. Yes, exactly. Limiting yeah, factor where all of a sudden a bunch of these lots wouldn't be able to go online and might look funny. Sure, with that, and uh, there, in that document that I put uh, uh, on your desk this evening here as well, that shows, um, that shows the setbacks associated with it, and as well as a potential building pad for that. But what I've seen in other plats that we've done is it also includes the wetland information. So people, like I said, as a as prospective house buyer, you could look at that lot and, and understand that this is my buildable area or envelope, and these are where wetlands exist on the property. Perfect, thank you. Eric, I have a question. If you could just show me where that sidewalk goes, does it go through the whole development, one side? How does that work? It'll be on uh, one side of the property and we're still looking at the north or south. We're still, <laughs> because it's not been built yet. It, a, lot of, a lot of it, what we're looking at is, is shadowing because the developers have done a great job staying, keeping a lot of the trees in there. If, if you ever have a chance to, to go in there and look at it, it's beautiful land. And they've done a really good job of working with the topography that's in there, keeping a lot of the trees. You know, they've made a real good effort of even, as, as they've been working on this, it says, I need to shift this road 10 feet because I've got that ability to save that large mature tree there. Okay. So they've, they've been very uh, you know, cognizant of, of the existing conditions there. So like I said, you know, we're still working with them. Is the sidewalk on the north? Is it on the south? How are we okay. looking for shadowing? 
ice buildup, et cetera, that way. But that sidewalk will, yes, go entirely from the Stebner all the way down into uh, the, the Bishop's Woods there. So Thank there you. may be the potential when the time comes as part of our road improvement project, when Bishop's Wood is done, that there may be the opportunity to create a sidewalk in that development as well. So people living in these existing homes could access the sidewalk, you know, walk entirely through this development or access our trail system over there to the east as well. So the city's trying to look forward and, and kind of, you know, you know, think ahead how this could work out. Thank you. Any other questions for Eric this evening? Um, I just, I'm, because I don't know how to read these plats very well, if you could help me on, on lot five. So there's like the, an octagonal portion on there and I'm just not clear what this is here. I see there's an easement here, right? What is, okay, yep, so, so that'll be- Lot five right here. And what you're seeing, I'm yeah. assuming you're asking about this area? Yes. That's where that stormwater pond is, is located at. So that's the easement on top of that to be able to access that, that pond. So it'll be part of that lot, but it, there'll be an easement for it, is yeah, that so right? Yeah, easement for that. Got now, it. for instance, in phase 1A, the pond is located approximately right through here, and that's located entirely within its own outlot. Right. So there's okay. two ways that we look at ponds that, you know, if we've got the ability, we prefer to have them on their own outlot because mm -hmm. more than likely the city will end up owning that. When you get into interior like this, you know, once again, we're looking at the topography of the property, how it works out on the site. In this case, it, this is where the pond, it's the best place for it. Okay. In that case, we work with an easement that the city can always get to it from an access standpoint. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Commission members, any other questions for Eric this evening? Does the applicant have anything to say this evening? Mr. Dilbert? Commission members, any questions for the applicant this evening? We can have them come up to the microphone. Not seeing any, thank you. Do you guys have any questions on this one this evening? If you could please come up to the microphone and please state your name and address. Okay, Bob Hackle, uh, uh, my wife, Linda. Uh, we live at 4841 Oak Ridge Drive. Uh, and I guess I'm confused as to, I've got this diagram that came with the uh, agenda minutes. And then the diagram that uh, you just showed, I, I'm confused as to what's what, because we have a, a stake in our backyard <laughs> that uh, shows it's lot five. So what you're seeing here, sir, and I'm gonna put these side by side. This portion is right through there. So that's what we're seeing. So if this is your property right below, yeah, you were seeing this stake more than likely that corner, I'm assuming. Okay, yep. And so Hermantown Marketplace now is is, is that right next to see I don't know. I thought that we were over here farther. The, uh, what the gentleman is referencing is there is this property has a split zoning on it. The R3 zoning is approximately, I believe, about this point right through here that runs through the middle of phase four. And this land over to the east falls under what's called the Hermantown Marketplace. Oh. So once 
assuming this keeps on developing in the future, especially a single family, what the, the applicant and the property owner would do is they would look at this as a planned unit development because they're able to continue that, that single family concept running throughout that way. Because right now in the Hermantown marketplace, that at least it's envisioned as a higher density residential. At least with this master plan, uh, and this is a snapshot of time, that they're envisioning that this will continue to be mainly a single family development that way. So once again, this is a snapshot in time. But the one, the constants are the connection here that fish down to uh, Oak Ridge, the connection on to Stebner, and then there'll be that roadway connection approximately in this location over to what's known as section 24, and that's the Northwest Properties sites right there. Okay. Like the problem. problem we have with the building on there. Is, so is this, this point here, is this point here? Uh, approximately, yes. Okay. And so, yeah, our concern then is that holding pond. That's basically our backyard. That retention pond is going gonna, is, is gonna to be what looks like over an acre. The, if, uh, actually, we'll put this, uh, this drawing up right here. So this is the southerly property line of that lot in your, in your northerly property line. Right. Yep. So the pond is located, it's uh, north of that in this area. So this is, once again, this is more or less the low point of this whole area through here of that, that ponding area. So Hermantown Marketplace starts? Uh, no, I believe it starts further over right. so approximately at this location. <laughs> But see, I can't, I'm just not seeing this because we, we're on the corner of, as, as far as I know, we're on the corner of Hermantown Marketplace. The, what is your property address? 4841. Uh, Mr. Wickman, are you able to get up a copy of the St. Louis County Land Explorer? Actually, Mr. Geisler has a copy right here, so. Mm -hmm. so you're in 4841. So this, this development, uh, I believe more involved in this location here, that this is, this is to the west of, of your property because the, um, the market for zoning to, because I remember, generally follows that line right there. And this is the extent of what we're just talking about this evening, this area through here. So I believe from looking at this map anyway, that your home is approximately right here. So uh, this is a little bit to the west of where your home is. The best I can interpret this map. Then how come I have a, we have a stake in our backyard that says, it's lot five. Yeah, I understand. I understand where it is. Yeah. Yep. And forgive me, I'm going to do some quick scaling as best I can. Right. So to your approximately twelve hundred and sixty-eight feet. Okay, with that being your home there. So now what I'm going to do is engineering and plot. <laughs> I haven't seen that. This is 200 feet. Be nice if we could see it. <laughs> Barbara, what was your address? 4841. 
If you look at this, there's a lot of one right here that's referenced right here. But there's two there. That's one. That's yeah, that's their home. So I'm able to say so that I'm state that he's saying is number five is right here. Yeah, no, so I, 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 no, in, in this block, I, I think it's mentioned with this plan then. Of your, of your, no, it your it's, it's just house. their house, yeah, their house. Oh, that, this is that pond that is the, there isn't yeah. lot five pond isn't the one that they're talking about, right? See, there's right that there's the that park. pond right there that yeah. was on the one that you were showing. The state doesn't agree with that. With with this, that's just a wetland spot right with, there. With, with this, this wetland diagram pond right here, the state is right is there. over farther. I guess if your concern is um, water flow maybe from that pond, is that, that the um, the developer is required, and that's what we're doing. They're very they're an engineer on this. They they create all the drainage mm -hmm. uh, from the right. water. Come to that. Where does the water go uh -huh. to? Okay. That's reviewed mm -hmm. by our city mm -hmm. engineer as well so think it's for the ultimate approval. approval. So there's a couple different steps mm -hmm. there that look for. Right. That's the one where he says it's having a pond right there. But that's where the reference is. Sure. When we had seen the plan before, this one. Okay. You can see here's the road that's being around. We didn't even have mm -hmm. that there. No, because at that point, this is mm -hmm. this is now the new phase because we just were looking at mm -hmm. 1A. Right. And now this is that's the right. one B. But I was on the yard with the guy. Okay. Where would that pond be right there? Right in the corner, yeah. that far back. Okay, I don't know. How close is half the lot? So it's closer to their lot. Yeah, that pond is right there. Okay. How far is that distance from there to there? Do you think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And there's still a ways from here to here, too. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's, part, it's part of the agency development that's required by our ordinance and it was in the state statute. Yeah. We have to Between them and their neighbors. Mm -hmm. How big is this? Quarter of their lot. Sure. Okay. Okay. We have no problem at all with the way it drains. Because this is a view. This is a view. Yeah, I've admired it. Never, never caused us a problem. But all of a sudden, now you're going to take that natural drainage away and and create a, a retention fund that that's going to devalue our property no, and we'll put it that. at risk. And, and that's why we've engineered designing these things so they look at how much water is going in there. We look at it up to 100 plus year events. So we, we size this. Did you want to see where it was? So you got probably you got a quarter it? a mile of roadway and and 16 or 10 or 16 driveways. Going to be dumping into that pond. That's the way it would be set up. It would be sized to take the impervious surface associated yeah, with that's the a lot. That way. Yeah. That, that's the city requirement. And that, that elevation, the elevation of that pond is going to be above the elevation of our lowest level of our, our foundation. So it's. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not sure what. What recourse we have, if anything, but and I'm still confused about these. To me, these two pieces don't match up. So once again, trying to scale on um, you know, a couple different documents. Out. Well, is there, do we have any? I mean, have the are we allowed any input? Uh, what what recourse do we have that you know what input can we can we provide that you know that that might make a difference well you can tell us how you feel about the development how your experiences are with the land today 
uh, what you think the changes might, you know, make and, and how they might affect you. Uh, we also have to go off the fact that it's a very reputable engineering company that's doing all the work for this project as well. You know, they do lots of work. I'd be shocked by that, to be honest with you. We hear everybody talk about their neighbors devaluing their property when they build something on it, and it never seems to come to fruition. But you're welcome to do that. And I understand your concern. You're, you're concerned about the stormwater retention pond that it would be between your neighbor's house and your house a couple hundred feet back in the woods. Um, from what I'm looking at is, you know, it's half the distance of your lot to where it starts. So I don't know, how, I don't know the depth on your lot. I didn't dig that far into it. No, but I mean, from the back of our lot to the... To right, I'm saying it's about half the distance of the depth of your lot from what I'm looking at. So how deep is your lot? 215. So it's about 125 or so to the start of the pond. To the start of it. Correct. How well, I, I, I mean, I'd like to be able to, to have some input to the thing, at, at least have some. I don't think it's staked out now because I walked back there. I don't see any staking. Okay, I, I personally have not walked that far into the development yet. It was uh, wet last time I was in there looking at it, um, but I'm just going off of the drawings that we've been provided by the engineering company. And I do know that the city engineer uh, met with the project engineer, and, and I'm not sure, uh, Gary, if you were out there or not, but they walked that whole line. And it, once again, they looked at a number of different potential locations for the pond uh, along in this phase 1B. And, and as I'd mentioned before, is, is you know, this is the natural low occurring area within the site where the water wants to go to. Sure. At the very start of, of the Hermantown Marketplace property, there, yep. there is a steep, steep decline. And it goes down to a huge gully. And the decline goes east, correct? Pardon? The decline goes east, right. And that's why they want to come in with the next phase of that development at the end of the road that you guys live on to take advantage of that natural terrain for the, the slope of the sewer system. Somehow, yeah, on record. I guess need some kind of feedback to know that I'm on record as opposing this. Yep. We totally understand, sir. Okay. I totally understand. You're welcome to come to the city council meeting as well. Or yes, this, or uh, this city council meeting for this will be on August 2nd. Okay, so on August 2nd, you're welcome to come to the city council meeting that evening as well. All right, thank okay, you. thank you very much for coming tonight. Do we have the dimension of the depth of that? estimated yet the, the volume the i was more curious pond. about the volume on the pond right yes that's correct yeah, not not necessarily the yes come on up size to and depth. yeah we'd like the cubic volume of the pond if possible uh, gary gilbert jlg enterprises um one thing that i will assure you of is that we cannot give you any more water than you have today. Correct. Those are the rules. Yep. So you're worried about water. The rules state that you cannot give any more. That's now, true. strategically, you said maybe a, a hundred. I think it's more like a couple hundred feet off of your property line is the start of that pond. So no, no, that pond is in the marketplace for it. So the pond is further east. The natural pond is there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, so the second thing, excuse me, the second thing is, and to answer best question is, the engineer has spent lots and lots and lots of time and effort. And like Eric has pointed out, the city engineer, myself, two of our engineers were out there to locate this. In the city engineer's opinion, which he reads things very, very well as far as topography, all 
all of this water wants to run to the east, not south. It wants to go to where we're going to go with phase two, the bottom of the hill there. So we need to, by rule, retain that water, tree it, and then it will release, not south. It's going to release to the east. And this retention pond will be for 10 lots, not 16. Okay. There's a separate pond, which Eric had mentioned earlier, up front by Shepherd. That's a separate pond for those. Yeah. Right. And I would say that. Um, The depth, I want to say, is it has to be it has to be dug with a couple of holes for sediment to fall into, and then um, up, up, be a flat bottom from there. But it also has to taper up, and it also has to be burned up mm -hmm. so that we don't let that water go south. We cannot let that water go south because that would be more water than what you have today. Right. Well, the, I think that your concern will be taken care of by rule and, and by engineering. Uh, we can't give you any more water. Than what we have today. As far as the state, is there any discrepancy as to where the state is? I mean, that's our property line right there. I think we lost control of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here, here's your line right here. <clears throat> where, 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 I'm going to cut this now. Excuse me, guys. <laughs> you guys are welcome to speak amongst yourselves all you want. I think we've gathered all the information that we need tonight. Does anybody have any other questions or comments on this? No. I guess my just comment would be just based on what I've understood. I didn't really see what was going on up there or anything, but the concern is excess water on your property with the developing development being put in. And my understanding from this conversation is unless there there's other documentation that there's already a water problem here, the development shouldn't cause a water problem on your property. Can I make one more comment? You're, yes, you have a chance to make one more comment. Yes, sir. The other concern I, I had is is appearance. I mean, if if we can, if there's no buffer zone between our property, the back of our property, which is very close to the property line, the house is. If if there's no buffer between this and the, and that that retention pond, some of these retention ponds look really bad. If you, if you go on Red Cedar Street, there, there's a small one there that looks terrible. Uh, on the other hand, in Sterling Pond, they've got one that looks really good. So, you know, I mean, is it, is the city, if the city, this thing gets turned over to the city, I mean, I don't think they've got the resources to, you know, to maintain retention ponds, you know. So I, we would appreciate at, at least a buffer between our property and that pond. What do you suggest as a buffer? No, oh, the, the the should there not be vegetation there already? There is no. Okay. I, we have no control over it once it's sold right. to somebody else. No. And to, to help out with that, this is two R three yeah. zone properties up against each other. Right. And then obviously the city does not have um, any restrictions for any property owner. Correct. On tree removal. Yep, they so, can clear cut the lot if they exactly, want. Exactly, yep. as well as, as as they could as well. Yep. So. Yep. Okay, uh, we've heard your concerns, sir, and we understand them. I, I do appreciate that.
Uh, commission members, any other questions or comments on this evening before I look for a motion on this? I guess I just wanted to just to finish my comment that th that is my understanding, correct, Eric, that there, this development will not, should not cause a water problem on this property. And if that did happen, it was documented that there would be, the homeowner would have an opportunity for some sort of recourse. This, Mr. Gilbert had pointed out, is per the uh, city statute, is there required to design these two city requirements? And as he had mentioned that water that comes into the site, you know, they cannot release water at a greater rate than existing conditions. I will not stand on catastrophic events of 2012 <laughs> when everything is out the door. So I cannot say stuff like never or things like that. But as Mr. Gilbert had pointed out, is, is per city requirements is yes, that you know what is what is leaving that site today is the level that they can design to. And once again, I think those are 100 year standards that way. Right. We, we cannot design for, nor we design for, you know, these catastrophic events. So it sounds like to, then for a homeowner, they would probably want to work with the city engineer or have a meeting just to review if they need more clarification on what was there right now versus necessarily the developer. Yes, yeah, something like that could happen. Yep. That's my, that was my understanding. But, but. Perfect. Thank you, Sammy. All right. Not hearing any other questions or comments this evening. Uh, we're going to close it, the uh, public hearing at 752 and look for a motion on 5B, which is an application by JLG Enterprises for a final plat. Commissioner, I move to approve agenda item 5B as stated. Mr. Colquist with a first. Can we get a second? Mr. Simmons with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Not hearing any motion passes. Thank you very much, everybody, this evening. Uh, moving on to 5C is uh, zoning ordinance text amendments by the city of Hermantown amending chapter 11 planned units developments. What I'd like to start with is myself and the city attorney have been reviewing this document even further the last couple of days. And uh, he has um, provided a number of comments. There are more or less clarifications and maybe looking for some additional um, explanation in some of these areas. So what I'm suggesting this evening is let's use this as opposed to taking an action or a recommendation, but rather to uh, obtain your input on this PUD ordinance as revised. And then this would come back to us in, a, excuse me, in August in its final format for a recommendation at that point. So given that, uh, what staff has done is we've taken the, the concepts and the ideas associated with the ARDC uh, PUD study. And what we have done is, if you recall that PUD study, there was a number of uh, different sections that the ARDC recommended uh, some changes in the language to. Uh, what the city did is we took those uh, those recommendations and we added them into specific sections within this new ordinance. Uh, in your packet, we have a couple different versions. We have what we call the marked up version. Uh, we have uh, where there's new text that's shown in red and where there's some strikeouts or text to be removed that has actually been struck through. And then at the back of that, we do have um, basically what we call the clean copy is that's what the ordinance would look at or look like. The, um, to help you out a little bit, uh, a number of the questions or comments from the staff standpoint had to do with section 1105 public benefit is uh, one of the recommendations of ARDC initially was to strike that section and instead use uh, what's known as the, um, the project amenities to take place of that. Uh, there's been a lot of discussions, once again, internally, that we believe that we should still keep in that public benefit section. And, uh, and it also referenced then uh, project amenities as another portion to that. Uh, particularly, the um, city attorney was looking at sections getting into the project amenities. He was asking questions of who maintains these, who owns these, 
more mm -hmm. looking at clarifications from that standpoint. And, and he made very good comments that way. And I think that we have the opportunity to uh, add some more basic clarifying text associated with those things. Uh, he was also asking questions regarding the establishment of density. Uh, the way this is currently written, it speaks that uh, at the initial pre-application meeting between the developer and the city, uh, after the, the review of what the developer is looking at and the city's review of the uh, neighboring properties is that's what would be dense, maximum density would be established at that time. Uh, the attorney's opinion of that was, he said we should strike that because then there's language that says that it cannot be changed after that. And, and he suggested that that language be struck in case after meetings like tonight, that there is more, um, uh, public comment that there may be different ways to look at a development. Sure, because in Gilbert's case tonight, with, with their half their property in the Hermantown Marketplace District, they could put up an apartment building. That's correct. Right. Yes. Okay. So um, really this evening, I said, I think I'd like this to have this more of a discussion of this PUD ordinance. And then, like I said, bring it forward in, in August. But 99% of this document reflects what the ARDC had recommended as part of their PUD study. That uh, particularly we, uh, we don't get into uh, hard and fast numbers regarding density. Uh, we do uh, put a limit on height, but we have that ability to increase that up to 25%, looking at how the property or project relates to its surroundings. Mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you could have a 25 height foot height in, 25 percent height increase to 42 feet, but it would trigger things such as greater setbacks, potential landscape plans, things like that. Um, the city attorney was also looking a bit more clarifications for uh, where we speak about traffic studies and traffic memos, uh, just trying to get some clarifications on that. If we recall, uh, what we discussed is project over either five acres in size or four units per acre would be required to have a traffic at least a memo associated with that. So he's looking at some further clarifications for that. Because what we're hoping is that this document will be able to stand on its own for some time, you know, particularly at least until we get into our comp plan, but at least you know, have this pretty well ironed out to uh, answer these questions. Uh, right now, um, we've not had any new PUD applications, even though the moratorium has expired. Uh, I have had initial conversations with someone looking to, uh, apply, but they understand that we have to get this PUD ordinance uh, finalized before he makes that application. So um, that's kind of in a nutshell, you know, generally the, the changes that we're looking at for this document. And once again, it takes the vast majority of what was already there, but added in these clarifying languages, trying to get some of this, uh, more of the concepts of the uh, project amenities into this document, which don't exist today. And likewise, I think we almost took this the same way with that PUD study. It was a lot of information for the board to uh, digest at one time. And we had looked at, we'd extended it four weeks. So P and Z could get a better comfort level with it. So um, I would suggest that we, we still take that route that, um, like I said, uh, I, I will work with the city attorney to add some of this clarifying uh, information and get this back out to uh, P and Z for their review. But I encourage you in the meantime to, uh, to be able to review this and ask any other questions that you may have or state any concerns that you have. Uh, at that point, uh, I guess I'd like to turn it back to you, Mr. Chair, and, and, and engage the uh, rest of the members on any questions or comments they may have. Sure, thank you, Eric. Uh, I do have one question. I think, what'd you say it was 42 feet was the maximum height? That is correct, yes. I think there's a house in my neighborhood that's taller than that. There's a, set the, there's a, some big ones. What we measure is, uh, you measure it to the uh, center of the roof peak. Okay. Where we do it. So. Okay. Um, it just doesn't seem that high to me, but it's, I, I think differently than a lot of people, I guess. Sure, with that, because um, uh, we've had one of the previous applications, it was a three-story coming in at 36. Mm -hmm. So um, 42, 
could you stretch it to four story? You know, it depends on when your floor plates are. Right. If you could pull that off or not. Okay. Commission members, any uh, questions or comments on this this evening? Any discussion? Do you have the sections that he was talking about, the ownership with asking the questions of that the attorney was asking on where who owns that, who does that? Do you do you have which one that was? Because I was catching some of that wondering myself. So sure. I was wondering if it's under section eleven thirty project amenities. Okay. That we start talking right. about the ideas oh. of community gardens, uh, public recreation areas. Uh, public plazas, things of those natures. Right. That that was, I, I want to say on each and every one of those sections, he wrote the same comment. Who owns, who maintains? Right. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I was asking. Who answers that question? Uh, that would be uh, staff would answer that we would we would revise this to um to come up with that and a lot and, and that's established at the time of in many of these projects we do what's called a development agreement right. and that's the agreement between the city and the project owner and those things are in the case of the jlg project there's a development agreement in place for the building of the roads sidewalks etc so let's say let's look at a pud it would be the same thing there's going to be a community garden associated with that Say, okay, how is the ownership going to work out? Is there going to be an HOA associated with it? Is it under a common interest community? We'd look at different type of activities that way. Okay. And establish those things. Okay. So instance by instance. Yes, okay. because a lot of things will be different. Different, yes. Yep. Okay. The goal of Good. these is to, is, you know, preventing some of these outlots that could go tax forfeit. Right. So that they're somehow tied to a building or the overall development that way. Thank you. Hmm. Commission members, any comment on this this evening? Okay, maybe I'll just keep talking because that's what I seem to do well. <laughs> Shut up sometimes, but um, we the you know, same thing. The idea of where we looked at splitting preliminary and final PUDs once again, yep. triggering either over four units per acre or five units in, or five acres in size. That language is in this document here as well. The, you know, thinking back, at least that was one of the things that struck me the most with our conversations was the um, at least we're not having the comfort level of a large development coming in. And P and Z only having one chance to review it. Mm -hmm. So that was language that we made sure was in this one of the requirements of that PUD uh, ordinance. The ability to split these and A, to help a developer that they can come in at the preliminary, right. find out uh, what can be done, uh, look more at a concept level type of design, and then at the final PUD, get into those nuts and bolts type of details that way. But at least have a, an initial read from planning and zoning as well as city council as to the overall, lack of better words, big picture of the project that way. Councilor Guys, are any input? Uh, no, there's just been a lot of hard work, as you guys all know, oh, yeah. and all the staff and the consultants and mm -hmm. the commission and city council have looked at it a few times. So yeah, I think we're, we're eager to get it passed so we can move on to that next PUD. Perfect. Eric, are you looking for us to make a motion on this or are we pushing this off till next month? Well, the question is, is the comfort level of this, um, of the board to um, to allow staff to keep working with the city attorney for the, the cleanup of his items. Yep. Um, if you're comfortable with that, you could make the recommendation of, um, of the PUD, recommending the PUD ordinance to city council. Uh, what we would do is we would not have this on October, excuse me, August 2nd, we pushed it to the 16th, that that would give staff and the city attorney up to about four weeks to iron out some of these, these fine points that he's looking to do. Uh, if the, the PNC, the board is not comfortable and they want to see a final draft of that prior, 
then we can continue this to the next meeting. Okay. Eric, I just have one quick question. Could you just summarize the uh, the lifespan of this until for basically from today until the next application can come in and use this as a, an ordinance? What are the next steps for this PUD amendment from today to when a developer could use it? Sure. So uh, when this receives a recommendation from PNZ, it then goes to uh, the next city council meeting, you know, or we could extend it out two weeks past that. But it has an initial first reading at city council, and then two weeks later is the final reading. At that point, that is an accepted ordinance that then is then put into the city's um, the city's code zoning ordinance that way. After, at that point, a developer has a chance to okay, I have this as my guidelines right. to work with the PUD. So in theory, you could see something as soon as a month later, an actual PUD application. But as we're standing right now, the if we had an application today for a PUD, we would guide the developer to need to wait until this PUD is accepted. The moratorium is off. The right. moratorium no longer exists on PUDs. But since the nature of this document, that we would uh, want to have this in place before an application comes in. And then just one other question. Was there any going to be any uh, public forums for comment on this? <laughs> this is one of them. <laughs> And no one's here. Does anyone in the city of Hermantown know this is going on right now? It's, it's, it's published out in our, uh, our our different websites and things that we have that way. So that's our way of being able to get the word out, short of individual mailings to all residents. Could you expand like the electronic survey for more residents? Like when we did our Google survey, is there an opportunity for that? The uh, We can... Send it out to um, basically the um, the initial group that had comment on it. Um, that's always a possibility. But like I said, usually with with ordinances, whether it's this or any of our ordinances, we notice it just by our normal methods. It's on the city's it's on the city web page. It's published in the Star, and and that's the extent of it. We don't reach out to individual people. Regardless of whatever the type of order is, yeah. because it's just that, frankly, not feasible. Okay. So, but like I said, this this document is vast majority of it. It was what contains the existing PUD from before, as well as the comments that we've all worked together for these last few months. Right. So the question of us tonight is: Are we comfortable moving forward like it is without seeing a final draft? That is correct. Okay. okay. Commission members, any other questions or comments on this this evening? Not hearing any, I'll look for a motion on 5C. It's a zoning ordinance text amendments by the city of Hermantown. I move to push it through to city council on August 16th. We have a motion. Can we get a second? I'll second that, Valerie Willett. Thank you, Valerie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Not hearing any, motion passes. Thank you very much for all your hard work on that one. There's a lot to absorb, you know? Oh, there and, is. And I want to thank all of you as well because we put in a lot of late nights on this. Oh yeah. You know, I believe that we received, you know, a good product from the ARDC. Yep. That we still are able to achieve what we want to. Mm -hmm. We still have that flexibility, not only from a staff review, but also P and Z and council, and then, but also I think we've given some at least some guidance or direction to future developers, and right. that was in end goal as well. Yep. So uh, well, again, thank you for all of your hard work these last few months. Could we request a copy before before it goes to city council, at least to be able to read in case there's something extraordinarily glaring? 
the you can get that, but since we have taken a vote, to right? Move it, yep. I mean, we wouldn't do any. Not that you. I mean, you but, could go. You could go. We could just. You could show up at the meeting. The yeah, meeting, yeah, you can show up. That's yeah. that's my. Well, that's no, no, my I know we we could go that route because, like I said, I'm I'm going to be working with the city attorney. When you're all done, clarifications in the same that, and um, yeah, but definitely I would say encourage you all to to look at this in the meantime. Oh yes, we have. Say, I have been. Section fifteen eleven. What's up with that? There are two. There are two readings at, at the city council, so right. we have certainly if there's issues right. we brought to Eric and he brought forward that you know after the first reading those amendments right. could be made for the second and final reading. Yeah, we're not the final just if city. we get a copy just to be able to see what you're seeing. Yeah. Well, would that be provided to the councilors prior to the meeting? Right. Yep. And would we have access to on that? Website. There. Oh, no, so we, if yep. you wanted to, you could go on and yep, look. Yeah, good. And that should be the August second meeting, right? Or That's August what. 6th. After my conversation with Mr. Overham today, yep. is is we both we want to have enough time to so go to the sixteenth. Go to the sixteenth. Okay. Yep. So it'd be the sixteenth, and it would be September seventh. Yeah, 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 exactly. For that, so oh, Valerie, I'll watch the. It's on the the Wednesday mm -hmm. of the prior prior to the council yeah. meeting. That'll be posted. Sure. On well, I think it looks great. I don't have any. I I can't <clears throat> imagine. <I> just <clears throat> would like to read the file. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah. sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to six, continuing business. I'm not seeing any. Uh, number seven, new business. We have seven A. It's a discussion on an amendment to a special use permit to add one townhome to the property located at 4247 Stebner Road. And I'm going to hopefully make your life easier. <laughs> uh, the potential applicant from this called me yesterday, and he said he uh, does not want to pursue this. Oh. He's reviewed his site. He said that the topography on there, he said, just doesn't really facilitate the addition of a townhome on this property. So um, I apologize I didn't get that to you prior. Good enough. But at this point, uh, there is no item 7A to discuss. Uh, eight, communications. I'm not seeing any. Number nine, commission member reports. Corey Colquist. Uh, just a quick question. Are packets still being sent out via mail for these meetings? Right now, no. We have, I uh, believe, in the last few weeks that uh, at least with the city council, we've done all electronic and we've done that with our other boards as well. Um, I'm assuming you like that. Yeah, no, it, it's not a problem. I can get a copy. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing it if it was coming to me. So that was my only okay. question. So perfect. Thank you. I guess how did the other members, does that work for you? I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Electronic work. I'm good, great. Yeah. Good either way. Especially when it's 51 pages. Yeah, <laughs> this work great. That's yeah. what we're finding as well is um, some of these really large agendas just in the printing and the mailing. And it's, it's the same thing. We have to get documents out by X date. Right. And um, sometimes you get pushed for time. It gets a little tight that way. Mm -hmm. So the electronic uh, seems to work pretty well for people. And, um, but same thing. I mean, if, if any of you said, you know, it's just not working for me or my printer's down this week, just reach out to me. Let me know. The other thing, too, sometimes uh, I like to do a lot of my stuff and, and I put it my own, but a lot of times I'll just have the city clerk run the agenda and put it on my desk and you or somebody could do that, too. We can still do that. Exactly. Yeah, have a printed agenda on your desk so you could have the agenda in front of you and then yeah. look at a computer or tablet or a lot of doing it. I, I print everything so that I can look back and forward. I'm still learning, so yeah. I'm trying to absorb all that goes on. Perfect. Uh, Valerie, all that? No report. Samuel Clark? No report. Uh, Beth Wensloff? No report. Buckley Simmons? No report. Councilor Geisler? Uh, this, yes, um, kind of important news. Uh, the governor lifted the uh, local emergency regarding the pandemic and last night's council meeting we did that as well so that means there's some changes to the uh open meeting laws uh, open meeting laws during the emergency were able to be uh, zoom and you were able to be remotely located um after uh august 30th you can no longer be remote, remote 
and zoom in. So if you're away on vacation or whatever, you can't zoom into a meeting. So if you're going to be gone, you're going to be gone and miss the meeting. There'll be no zooming in. We're still going to do Zoom um, so that the applicants for public can zoom in. But as a commission member, council member, you have to be here in person. There's no more zooming in. It will be allowed by state statute next month yet, but after August 30th, we have to mm -hmm. be here. Uh, and if you can't be here, obviously let Eric know. So uh, that was the new rule last night at council meeting. So it's good to know. That's uh, I think that's all I have to report. Oh, well, other than uh, I guess we'll have some time after the August meeting, but um, I think also. Uh, Joe announced last night or gave us some information that the, the, the celebration, uh, ribbon cutting, if you will, of the new trail, uh, Tuesday, August 24th, right? At, I don't know what time. Maybe Mr. Bookman can chime in on that, but uh, we'll more information to follow, but it'd be nice if people could attend that uh, on the evening. I think it's by on the 24th of August. It'll be at the Stedman Park kind of with the trail head there. Perfect. 24th. 24th. And uh, potential for a couple food trucks there. So, um, like, you know, like Mr. Gadsby said, a uh, celebration of all the hard work for everybody. Okay, August 24th. Yeah, don't tell anybody I told you, but uh, pretty much been opening evenings for walking or biking or whatever. I told Mr. Peterson the other day. And okay. I think he got out there. So, I think during the day, there's still some watering going on and some, some work, but there's been a lot of people on it in the evening. So, Take advantage of it. Yeah, I went last night. It was really nice. Beautiful scenario. Can't wait to see it expanded again. Okay, uh, that being said, we're looking for a motion to adjourn. Sam Clark, I'll motion to adjourn this evening's meeting. Thank you, Samuel. Can we get a second? Cole for the second. Thank you, Corey. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, with that, the meeting is closed at 8.17 p.m. Thank you very much, everybody. Ah.